realagriculture.com presents farming forward sharpen your soil health expertise with cover cropping nitrogen management and advanced grazing brought to you by the farm resilience mentorship program My name is Derek Axton. I farm with my family near Minton, Saskatchewan. It's a fourth generation operation. We've had the land and the family for about 100 years. We are located very near the U.S. border, straight south of Regina. We grow a lot of heritage grains and a lot of intercrops. Our farm this spring will seed a little over 10,000 acres. We started making changes probably oh, 13 or 14 years ago. and. Um, Prior to 2010, we had been mineral banding our nitrogen urea was the, was the form, and then when we discovered intercropping in 2011, we just decided to not use nitrogen on those acres, and we didn't see a huge difference. So, and those acres then by 2015 kind of became half of the farm. We had just seen the the possibilities of what it can do without without the urea, and then in 2016 we. We stopped using, uh, we changed seeders, um, didn't have mineral banders, and uh, changed our nitrogen source. We're using ammonium sulfate now, uh, small amounts. Uh, our typical growing season, we use 20 units of N total. Uh, we've been doing that since 2016, and crops seem to be responding well. Our current uh, nitrogen management strategies, our, our farm is swap mapped. Um, we, we believe strongly in variable rate application of as many things as we can. Our, our soils are highly variable. We have organic matter levels that range from 2% hilltops to 6.5%, 7% low spots. So it's, you know, significant difference. You know, obviously require different management. Our yields have been surprisingly stable and, and the last couple of years increasing. Uh, the other side of that is that our protein levels have been coming up over time. You know, this, this has taken us quite some time. I mean, we've been at this for sort of 15 years of change and we did a lot of things wrong along the way I mean it definitely wasn't a straight A to B by any means with a biological system because I mean you're really turning around a freight train or a steamship or whatever metaphor you like to use but it, this isn't a yeah it's not a Ferrari we're happy with the change we've seen obviously we'd like it to be better I mean I, I don't think that soil health has a finish line so cover crops seem to be a bit of a moving target for us we, we put as much effort into them as we can every year. And some years that means significant amount of acres. If we have good conditions in the fall, we have time, you know, it is, it's a struggle. I mean, I, I guess I'm sort of talking in the context of, of post harvest cover crops right now. For us, it's a matter of manpower, moisture availability, because sometimes there just is no rain. And if there is no rain and there's no rain in the forecast, it is a bad idea to seed cover crops, unfortunately. I mean, I, I would love to see them on every acre, but it's not an every acre, every year thing for us. It just, it just isn't. We've learned that you've got to be pragmatic ab about cover crops because it, it, you can't just seed and hope for the best. As far as full season cover crops, we'll take one or two quarters, three quarters maybe, depending on the year, maybe for section even, of our poor performing fields for whatever reason. Lots of times it's compaction related, so poor infiltration, maybe a weed problem, maybe a perennial weed problem we're struggling with, and that gives us sort of a whole season to work on it for whatever reason. That full season cover, we like to just kind of maximize our, you know, photosynthesis time of the, of the year. And we've seen significant uptick in, if, if you can get four to six inches of growth, it doesn't look like much out there, but what's going on below ground is, is significant. One of the things we were seeing and one of our concerns, and, and it, it still is a little bit to this day, is, has been like sort of the slow hardening that we've seen. Um, with the adoption of no-till, obviously, there's no tillage, and, and we think part of the problem with, with high synthetic fertility rates that we were seeing, um, we were losing structure, like we were losing soil aggregation, and we've seen an improvement in that since. Um, Soil aggregation is, is super important for so many reasons. I mean, having getting oxygen into the soil because it's, it's a biologically driven system. Biology can't thrive without oxygen. And, and we were seeing our systems collapse. You know, I think partially that was due to 
high inclusions of, of legumes in rotation, high amounts of synthetic nitrogen were, were two of the things leading to that. And uh, we've changed both of those and we've been seeing improvements. Profitability is a funny one, you know, because you know, you'd asked about yields and I know it's, it's, it's good for the ego and it's good for the coffee shop and all of those things, but I don't honestly care about yields. I just care about profitability. And that's something that I was able to get my head around years ago, um, luckily, because, and I was a high yielder. I was a maximizing production. That was, that was it. And I don't know when I realized that maximizing production isn't nearly as fun as maximizing profitability. So, I mean, that's, we found the, our, the years we have our greatest success is the years that we're the most organized for it. And, the, the, you know, it's sort of a problem too, because you can, you can only be so organized and then the weather has to cooperate. So you can be as ready as you want. And if it's, if it's dry down three inches and there's no rain in the forecast, we wait, you know. As this thing progresses, as we build resilience and we make our sponge larger, all of these things become easier. That's, you know, and that's, that's what we're, where we're trying to get to. Is, is about, is, that's what this whole thing's about, is resilience. It's better in the wet years and better in the dry years. And the, the thing about these practices are, is these practices help us both on both ends of that spectrum. If you enjoyed this video and want to continue to sharpen your soil health expertise, encourage you to go to farmlearninghub.ca to learn more.